Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'll be going over the um, MMA card for this weekend. I guess that would be March 20th? No, March 19th. Uh, heads up, this is in London, which means it's going to be at early start, Eastern time. I believe uh, 1 p.m., um, maybe 11. No, but I think it's 1 p.m. actually, Eastern time. Um, first of all, regarding last week, I was lucky enough to get her fourth or fifth in some single entry to kind of uh, basically break even for the week. Uh, I told you guys going into last week, it was a very, very difficult card. And, uh, and it did not disappoint as far as that was concerned. Um, this week um, is also pretty difficult, but for different reasons. And we'll, we'll get through it and we'll, get th we'll go through fight by fight. And I wanna try to avoid touching on a very similar theme, um, but it, it's kind of hard to ignore. Um, I guess we'll get to it along the way. It is a tricky card because the, there are a lot of big favorites and the underdogs don't really look that great. And yet the favorites have some issues. Um, so we're just going to just try to stick to the numbers and, and get our takes that way. And yes, I am going to be throwing in some of my, you know, uh, my non-numbers related takes along the way. Maybe we can add a little value or at least not subtract too much as we go through it. First thing I will say is that, again, you know, people, you know, I, I, I only mention it because I, I want to give you guys the best advice I can give you. And if you want to accuse me of being a conspiracy theorist or being anti whatever, you could just, you know, that's fine. But this is the first uh, MMA card being fought uh, in London in quite some time. And there are a lot of guys from, from Great Britain and the surrounding areas on this fight. Um, all, all I will say is this, without accusing anybody of anything, is that if in fact you bet against any of these guys, whether it be betting wise or DFS, and expect to get a decision in your favor. Uh, let's just say you're just not allowed to complain if you don't. Um, and we'll get to some examples of that where it could become relevant uh, somewhere along the way. And the other thing that's kind of interesting as we get through some of these fights is, I wonder if the, if the fighters and more to the point, the, the, the trainers know this, you know, if you were, a, if you were fighting one of these uh, guys from England, are you telling your, your fighter, listen, dude, you, you got to get this knockout because you're just never going to win a decision in this environment. Um, if that's the case, then maybe from a DFS perspective, these guys that are facing the, you know, the guys from, from Great Britain, the surrounding areas might actually be, better DFS plays than otherwise, because they'd be more inclined maybe to go for the finish rather than kind of rely on, you know, put, putting it in the hands of the decision, uh, the, the, the decision gods, that being the judges. And no, I, I have no evidence to you know, back this up. I have no idea who the referees are, but, you know, let's just say I've just been around the block. <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, okay. So, in, in no particular order, uh, let's just let's just go through uh, from the bottom to the top using the best fight odds site. Uh, it, we could go back to the DraftKings site as well. As a matter of fact, let me let me get that up real quick. Hold on, let me just pause this for a second. Okay, sorry, so we got it up here anyway. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the fight order is. I, th I think this is right. This would be amazing if this were actually the first fight on the card. So let's just let's just presume it is. So let's get right to it. The first fight of the night is um, uh, the first fight of the night is Cody Durden versus Muhammad Makayev. And already we have a tough one because first, let's just look at the numbers. You have Makayev as a 3.8, uh, uh, 3.8 to one favorite. Um, and then you have a fight doesn't go to the decision line, which is not that great. You know, it's minus 165. And 
with respect to the grappling upside, which is the other thing that you want to, you know, justify this type of price tag, um, is it's not that terrific. You know, Makayev is is a good grappler, but Cody Durden is as well. So I don't I don't think that Makayev is going to have that great of a of a wrestling grappling upside um, to offset what could be a pretty weak inside the distance prop is only minus 165. So you have this situation where this guy is really regarded as, as this incredible prospect. He's you know, 100 no or whatever as an amateur and he's stepping up and this is his debut in front of home fans. Now he was originally from, from, um, from, uh, from, from uh, he was originally Dagestani, but he actually escaped from there, I think uh, uh, as a kid and, He's training and living in, in England. So he's an incredible fan favorite. Um, everybody's waiting for him to come. It's, if it's in fact the first fight of the night, everybody's gonna be buzzing. There's all kinds of hype on this guy, but he's 21 years old fighting a guy who's, you know, who, who's, <laughs> who's got some experience, who has grappling, who's a good wrestler. Um, and he's a big dude, you know? And, and remember, you know, even though you're 20, you're 21, you're fighting an older guy. Sometimes you have just kind of a physicality disadvantage. Um, so I don't know. It's, 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 it, it's, it's, he's, he is minus three and a half to one for a reason, but I, I just wonder if that reason is more along the lines of hype and, and all that stuff than, than actual winning chances. Because remember the, these odds are just based on what people are betting. You know, they're not actually the odds of him winning. Now, again, that's the best we can do probably is, is suggest that the betting line is reflective of what's going to happen. But don't forget that the, the, the betting line is not, does not necessarily mean that those are his winning chances, right? I, I, I think you know what I'm getting at. I'm probably being way too verbose explaining what's a pretty obvious um, observation. Um, so what do you do? Um, do, do you play Mokaya about what's his price? Uh, uh, 9,100. I don't know. It seems like it's a fair price, but not anything terrific. That's the best I can describe this. Now, what about Durden? The good thing about Durden is that he does have the win condition. In other words, if he can, you know, his, his skill is in his grapple and in his wrestling. His, unfortunately, it's a kind of a tough, it's a tough spot because his cardio isn't that great. Um, so, you know, he's, he's big enough to, to impose his will maybe on Mokaya, but he doesn't have the cardio to make it maybe last the full three. So it's a tough spot for, for Durden as well. And then if you want to go and play Durden, you're really fighting some of that you're really fighting some of that um you know some of that judge bias here i mean imagine if you play durden at a plus 290 or say 7100 on fan on DraftKings. you think you're having a good performance and it goes three rounds and you know what'll happen like you know durden's probably his best win condition is coming out uh, Mokaya not really realizing, you know, how tough these guys, these professionals really are. Durden gets a, you know, a round one win. And then round two, he gets a takedown and probably just kind of, I don't know, just does just enough to win barely round two. So he's got one round, and then one round and then a second round, maybe. So he's probably up two zero. And then you're just hoping that he doesn't get finished in the third round. And then the third round, you know, the, the, the cardio takes over from Makaya and Makaya just kind of comes back and just, just it beats him a sound 10, nine. And you think you did enough in those first two rounds to, to get that, to get that decision. And yet here come the judges and woo, you know, Makaya just gets the win. Um, you're not going to be happy. Um, but you know, I, I warned you in advance. And the problem is again, is that Jordan, I don't think has finishing upside. So I think Jordan's win condition, is just a lot for him to get there. Um, I'm probably going to take some shots anyway. Um, but like I said, you're just not allowed to complain. If you play him, he does as well as you think, and you still lose. Um, and yes, there are variations where he can, he can lose and still be on the winning lineup. 
Um, I think that the, the, the slate is a little bit too big for that today, this time, but that's my analysis of this fight. I think that Makayev is probably a, a, a small fade, um, given everything that I just said. Because listen, um, you know, I, I, if, if, you're, if you're playing him for the decision, you know, you can't, you're not paying 9,100 and that's bad. So you're playing him to finish him, really. And I just don't think the finishing upside, as is at least implied by the inside the distance prop, is really strong enough at that price to make him any kind of priority. So he's, for me, he's going to be kind of a thin fade. I have this feeling I'm going to play as much dirt as Mokayev and probably neither that much. All right. Uh, next, uh, Vince Morales versus Nathaniel Wood. So this is another one. You have you have a, a win rate, you know, for Nathaniel Wood of about three to one, but the inside the distance prop is pretty poor. I mean, it's favored to go to decision, and that's not something you want. And, and, and Nathaniel Wood is really not a wrestler, really at all. So it doesn't seem like the type of guy you want to get to. Now, the, the, the good thing is they finally got a little smart. They at least they didn't make him 9,100. They did have him priced at only 8,900. And it's very rare, by the way, that you have someone who is a 3.5 to 1 favorite who is only priced at, uh, or 3 to 1 favorites only priced at 8,900. Those guys usually by, by rule are over 9K. But I think that DraftKings is getting kind of sharper with its pricing um, in that they're, they're factoring in that he doesn't have the grappling upside, factoring in that he doesn't have the inside the distance prop. So I think 8,900 is fair, you know, uh, for, for, for Nathaniel Wood. I wonder if he's, he could be a sneaky play here. So, I mean, you think about this, like the inside the distance prop isn't good, but, but it's not bad either. In other words, it's probably about a pick em to finish. So if it's a pick him to finish, and he's probably three to one, so probably about half the time, he does not about it. Yeah, maybe about a quarter, you know, thirty percent of the time, he wins inside the distance, and he's probably gonna be pretty low owned. So think about this. So if he's gonna be, so thirty percent of the time, you get a fifteen percent owned guy to maybe get ten x or so. I don't know. Maybe maybe he could be a sneaky play here. Um, in the second fight of the night. Cause I know people do like to play the first fight of the night sometimes to get off to a good start, especially with a 3.8 to one, you know, superstar hype machine uh, play. And maybe the second fight of the night would be the one that gets overlooked. So maybe if Daniel Wood at 8,900 could be kind of a sneaky play. All right. Corey McKenna against Elise Reed. Um, from what I've heard, I mean, Corey McKenna's this 0.25 to one is is very uh, two point five to one is very very justified. She apparently is is definitely worth that against Elise Reed. Problem again inside the distance prop is extremely poor, so I don't think you could play her. Now I'm just gonna guess, without even looking at the price, given everything I just said. Like let's say that um um, well, I was gonna put a price on this given what I just said about the Nathaniel Wood fight. So Corey McKenna is not quite three to one and similar inside the distance prop. So I would say Corey McKenna fair value, probably be 8,700. Let's see what she, yeah, it's about 8,800. So I think Nathaniel Wood is probably a little bit better play. It's definitely a much better play. Think about this. Nathaniel Wood's a bigger favorite and he's, and he's got a better inside the distance prop than Corey McKenna. Right. Um, so that's why I think Nathaniel was definitely better than Corey McKenna. And no particular interest in the, the dog in this, in this spot. All right. So Timor Valley versus Jack Shore. Here we go. Here's another one. So Jack Shore uh, uh, from, I think, Great Britain, or at least the surrounding areas. Everybody loves him, and he's undefeated. Uh, you know, if you play Valiev and you expect to get a decision win, I would just, I just wouldn't do it. You know, like if you play Valium, you're just going to need, you're going to need the finish. You just are. I mean, considering also that Jack Shore is going to be, going to be coming after him. He's going to be the aggressor. He's going to try for takedowns. He's going to try to be clinched and, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, you, you're just, you're just not going to win a decision with Timor Valia. I mean, 
and especially, I mean, look at the price. So you, Timor Valley is 8,600 <laughs> and he's only a, you know, a minus 120 favorite. This is a lot to ask uh, to play Timor Valley of here. Um, especially, I mean, look at, let's look at the inside the distance prop. I mean, this is brutal. Uh, minus two, two to one to go to decision. So for Valley up to get there, I mean, that's, that's, that's just asking a lot. Okay. Um, now, as a result, he's probably going to be low owned. Um, but again, it's just a lot to ask for him to knock that guy out. Speaking of which, um, Jack Shore is going to be an extremely popular underdog. And for good reason. I mean, he's got, he's got, like I said, he's only about to pick him, right, to lose the fight. And he first of all, he's priced at 7,600. So just from a pricing perspective, he probably has equity. And then considering the fact that he's going to be just, you know, trying to get inside and super takedowns, you got a little grappling upside equity. Plus you have all kinds of being at home decision equity. I mean, well, that's, I guess that's part of the win equity. Right? But uh, I don't know. I mean, this is, this is a, I hate to say it's a tough fade because it's not like he's a lock or anything like that. He's still only pick him to win, but I don't know. This is a, uh, this is probably the easiest underdog to play. Now, again, you could, he could get pieced up. He could get knocked out. There's a lot of ways you can lose. But um, I think Jack Shore is a very, uh, very uh, acceptable, chalky underdog. All right. Paul Craig against Nikita Krylov. So th this fight is, is probably one of the least um, confusing ones, at least from, from a numbers perspective. You have an inside the distance prop. Uh, actually, this one is not one of them. Sorry, we'll get to that. This one, you have an inside of this is probably minus 250, which is good. Uh, it's not one of the two best, but it's definitely good. And what you have is you have two guys with kind of weird win conditions. So they neither of them like to strike all that much. I guess Krylov more so, right? See, the thing is Krylov doesn't like to strike. He's better at it, but for whatever reason, he just likes to go for takedowns also. And Paul Craig just he's like, okay, fine, come take me down. I'm just a submission dude anyway. And I'll and I'll try to submit you in the scramble. So it's a weird fight in that you're not gonna get, you're not gonna win based on volume. You're not gonna probably win based on too many takedowns, right? Um, it's not like one of those like rinse and repeat, you know, take you down, pull you up, take you down, pull you up thing. It's guys are just gonna be grapple and, and it's kind of hunting for submissions for the most part. And probably one of them gets it. Um, so for me, I think this is a, a not a must have fight, but I think at least we know what's going on here. Like there's a lot of fights where we don't know what's going on. Like this, my, this Mukaya fight, I have no idea what's going on with this guy. Okay. At least we know sort of what's going on here uh, with Craig and Kreloff. Uh, and I'll respect the numbers here, probably about 66% of the time it finishes. And you probably want to have both sides. The thing is, though, is that if you have, um, what should we call it? If you have uh, Kreloff, he might actually, I think he's priced well enough that if he gets a finish, it's going to be good enough. Kreloff, he's under 9K, right? Yeah, he's 8,700 also. They did a nice job of this because I think Kreloff is not the type of guy to, he's not going to win the first round. He's not going to put up 100 points, but I think he'll get like maybe a good second or third round um, finish, which is probably good for about 90 which is probably what you, you know, 8,700 is, 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 uh, you know, kind of implies uh, as being like kind of a good result, but not a smash result. So uh, I do think this is probably a good fight to go after. And no, I have no opinion really one way or the other on people, these guys. All right. So now you have um, Pavlovich versus Shamil Abrog. I'll, I'll start, you know, as I do this for more, I'll start to be able to pronounce these guys a little bit better, but you have, a guy at minus three to one with an inside the distance prop of minus 500. Okay. So from a numbers perspective, this is just the guy you have to play, right? I mean, he's just, let's, let's look at even his, I mean, Pavlovich himself is minus 200 to win by KO. I mean, unless he's like 9,400 or something, I mean, you just got to play. He's only nine K. I mean, what, what are we doing here? 
The only thing that that's 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 concerning to me is he's off freaking two years. This guy's off a two year layoff. Now I know what you're saying. Sheets isn't that factored into the price? Yes, it is. I know. I know. All that's factored into the price. All that's factored into the inside the distance prop or whatever. So I'm going to ignore it and I'm going to play it, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> it's like, I mean, if you're coming off, I, I, guess, I guess, you know what, you're coming off to your, to your layoff. Maybe you're concerned about how long you can go coming off two years. So you are going to just kind of just go for that early knockout, I guess, um, which is what you want. So, yeah, I think this is probably one of the premier spots is, is to take Pavlovich here. Um, not too interested in the, uh, uh, the, the, the Shamil side. All right, uh, Mike Grundy versus Amir Akani. So Mike Grundy is a is a is a wrestler. He's a rinse and repeat wrestler. His path to victory is completely dependent on his ability to wrestle, which is of course uh, very conducive to drafting scoring. And uh, as a result, we could probably ignore the inside the distance prop because in his case probably better off getting to a decision. Um, but there have been issues. I mean, there have been other spots where he was supposed to have been able to take guys down really easily and was unsuccessful at it. Um, so he's not a lock or anything like that. And you look at this, if he's such a lock, why is he only minus 190, not minus 300? So I'm suspicious, but I'll play it. You know, uh, this is, you know, your, your, your classic win condition guy that, look, if he doesn't get a bunch of takedowns, he's not winning. Um, so, uh, I'll, I'll take a shot at that. Uh, and his price is pretty reasonable. I think at 8,600, is that what he is? Let's double check that. 8,500 even. So this is a very, very reasonable. And Americani, not, not too interested in that. So the easiest, I guess the easiest of these favorites is probably the next fighter, Ilya Tukoria. I mean, he is, I mean, look, look at this. He's minus, he's a six to one favorite almost. And you got an inside the distance prop of minus 500. You have here, Tukoria by TKO is plus 170, but he's got a submission plus 100. I mean, he's got probably going to finish this dude. Okay. Um, and the good thing is, is that Herbert, you know, he's from England, but it doesn't matter because we're not, if, if it goes to a decision, I don't want Ilya Tapuri anyway at his price. So I'm not worried too much about that. Um, so Tapuri, to me, seems like the easiest of these favorites. Um, he has the least amount of question marks. I compare him so far with um, Pavlovich. He's off two years. You have um, Mokhaev. I don't even know what he's all about. You know, and you get the first fight of the night hype. Uh, is, you know, I, I have a feeling hype is 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 responsible for some of his win equity, whatever it is. So I do think that Taporia is probably the safest of these from a GPP perspective, if that's if that makes any sense. Um, of all of these uh, all these favorites so far. Um, McCann, Carolina. Uh, Poor inside the distance prop, just just not interested at all. Gunnar Nelson versus Takashi Sato, another guy off a layoff here. And this is what I've been hearing all week. So first of all, let's guess a five to one favorite. And the inside the distance prop is, is good, but not great. You know, minus 250. And this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing... I'm not sure if you're going to get a full Gunnar Nelson coming off the layoff, but as long as he's like 75%, that should be good enough. I don't, I don't like that. I, I just, I just don't like that. People are already modeling for, yeah, he's probably not going to be hundred percent, but he's going to be good enough. I don't know, man. I, for me, it, it, it just, it just feels fishy. I, I don't know. That's the best I can describe it. Sato's not bad. You know, when you sheets, how do you know he's not bad? I don't know. I mean, it's from what I've read, from what I've seen, he's he's good enough. He can grapple okay. He can strike okay. He's fighting a, a tough battle because Nelson's from the area also. 
So even if Sato gets like a, puts on a lifetime performance and jabs and stays at range or whatever, I just I just don't think he's getting the decision anyway. So at the the best thing I can tell you is I probably will end up fading Nelson. But then again, what's his price? If he's like 8,700, he's a tough fade, right? No, so he's 9,200. So, so that I can probably fade because his inside the distance prop is not that great as the five to one favorite, you know, as opposed to, I, I think Tapori is like a much better play than Nelson, if that makes any sense. So again, unfortunately, I, can, I just, I don't know if I can play Sato. I, I just, he's just, it's just never going to win the decision and he's not going to knock him out. So what am I going to do? At least, at least in the dirt and underdog, you know, he's going to get takedowns. So then if he somehow like gets the, gets the win, you know, he's scoring well. It'd be a shame if Sato got there and still didn't make optimal, but seven K isn't he forced to, I don't know. I, I just feel as though Durden's a better underdog than Sato. Given all the given the given the environment. All right. So next one. So you have Patty Pimblett against Rodrigo Vargas. Let's just first look at the numbers. From the numbers, it's really easy, right? So he's a, he has a six to one favorite. Fight doesn't go to decision is good, not great. He does have some takedown upside. So overall, he looks like a good play. Again, not as good as far as I'm concerned as the Tuporia play. But let me let me just suggest something to you. So Rodrigo Vargas, this is not this would not be the first time Rodrigo Vargas disappointed a lot of people um, by winning. When when they brought in all these Chinese fighters in that one fight, what one card I think of it was a year ago. One of them came in with all this hype and was a big favorite over Rodrigo Vargas. And I, th- I forget which one it was. Uh, I'm going to pull it up just to remind myself. Oh, uh, yeah, Zhu Rong. And Vargas is only 7,100. And he basically, you know, he just kept him at range, leg kicked him the whole time. He did get taken down eventually, but he won a pretty handy decision. Uh, if you want to know the truth. So this would not be the first time if Vargas pulled it off that he won a, you know, a fight that was supposed to be fixed against him. But like you said, you got Patty Bimlet from the area. Everybody loves him. Or if they don't love him. They love to hate him. He's, everybody's coming to see him. And even if Vargas keeps him at range and, and, and wins, sort of, you just, you just, they're just not letting him win. I don't know. So probably going to avoid that. But on the other hand, you really want to pay, play Pimlet at 9,400 with that inside the distance prop. It's rough. It's rough. Um, I have to have some, I guess. But I think it's, I, I, for whatever reason, I think it's fishy, can I tell you. Um, Dan Hooker versus Arnold Allen. Seems like the only straight fight on the board. You know I mean? between like two guys that there's no, there's no big, one big, uh, one big rooting interest for, for one side, I guess. And this one, you got an 8,200 8k fight and they make it hard on you here because they're here. It's not really the greatest inside the distance prop. You have a, it's about a pickup. Naturally it's favored to not go to, to, to not get finished. So you're talking about a decision probably with these guys. And it's not exactly too much grappling upside either. So it's probably a striking match. I mean, you might just because it's pretty high level, get enough volume to pick up enough enough significant strikes. But in a decision, is it going to be enough? I don't know. I have no opinion between these two guys, so I'll probably, just because of the pricing, I'll play some of both of them. But I just don't be don't be shocked if it's some you know really nice striking battle where the winner you know scores decision and gets seventy fantasy points. All right, then we get to here. All right, so again, I I really don't want to be the ugly, not the ugly American, the conspiracy theorist or whatever. 
But given all that's going on, let, let me let me suggest something to you. This is the fight. This is the fight. This is the first fight card in London in five years, however long it was. Tom Aspinall is from London or from England, wherever. He is. Everybody loves this guy. His dad's famous. Uh, like he's he's been coming up the ranks, and he's fighting a Russian. And it's at it's in England. Okay, who in their right mind would take Volkov in this fight? Honestly, um, so I put that out there to you. But it, but here's the thing: is that. Aspinall is probably not likely. Okay, here's the problem from a DFS perspective. If you want to play Volkov, because it is a pick, right? And I, I promise you this, that these prices are like minus 20. Let's say they have Aspinall minus 120, whatever. I promise you that the real chances of winning is probably more towards Volkov, just because there's so much love and so much hype and so much whatever piled on the Aspinall. I'm sure this line is wrong. I'm sure if you ran this, you ran this fight a thousand times that Volkov would probably win 60 of them. I really do feel that way. But the problem is this, is that I don't, I don't know what Volkov's path to victory is, you know, cause I don't think he's going to knock out Aspinall and his decision equity is so low, you know, that I don't, I don't know if you could play him. Um, the other thing is that even if you thought the judging was going to be fair, Volko is not going to be that guy to, 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 to ground up a lot of volume. And even though this is a five round fight, you know, there's a lot of fights here that can finish. So I don't, I just don't think Volkov's playable. I think you could, you could probably bet him, you know, just, just if like you forget about where the fight is or whatever, I know that this line is wrong. Just not having nothing to do with MMA. I know that Volkov should be the favorite. But from a DFS perspective, Aspinall has all the KO upside, I think. He's got grappling upside. He's got, he's probably more likely to finish than Volkov. You know, Volkov's win condition is just being a better striker and a better fighter. And unfortunately for DFS, that's probably not good enough. Um, even though it's five rounds, which helps, I think on a 13 fight card, you told me that a guy like Volkov, who doesn't strike with that, you know what I mean? He's not that much of a pounder. Um, he, and apparently his volume has gotten less recently. Uh, on a 13 fight card, I don't know if it's mandatory to play him. Um, now I'm not saying he's a bad play. I mean, look, he can still get 80 fantasy points, you know, whatever. But the way I would play this fight is I would play probably 50% uh, Aspinall and 50% Fade. Okay. And the thing is, again, I know that I'm on the wrong end as far as the win equity goes from Aspinall. And I'm probably on the wrong end of the popularity because I'm sure that more people are going to play Aspinall than Volkov. But I just feel the win condition is just so strong for him. You know, he has the grappling upside, if, if any. He's got the KO upside. He's got the decision. He's just got all the DFS going for him here. So even though I know it's a sucker bet from a betting perspective, feel as though I just have to do it from DFS. So what do we do? Um, one thing that I have not been able to identify all that much are really great underdogs. Like the, the only one I kind of indicated was Jack Shore. And unfortunately, I feel as though that's what everybody's going to want to do. They're going to, they're going to play Jack Shore and then kind of figure out the next, um, uh, the next underdog you want to play. Um, so I think he's going to be really popular. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to make my lineups. Um, I'm just going to have to eat it with some of this Cody Durden and hope I get lucky. Probably have to eat it with some of this. Well, with Paul, Paul Craig's a very reasonable underdog, or right? that's somebody you can play. Um, Probably going to have to play some of this Takashi Sato. i really been unhappy about it. Maybe play a lineup or two with the Rodrigo Vargas. Ouch. Or just hope I don't have to play any of them and just play a middling build, right? So you, you, you play someone from the Arnold Allen fight 
that's like 8,000. 8, 8, you play the Aspinall fight, that's 8,000. You play maybe Jack Shore. And then if you just play Durden, for example, you don't even have to play Durden. You can get away with it with like a Paul Craig. You can get away with it with, 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 with some of these 8Ks and make that work. Um, so overall, pretty conspiracy-laden uh, fight card. But what's cool about it, it starts at early. So I'll probably be able to watch most of it before I have to go out for the night. Um, Kind of fun card to analyze from my perspective. Hopefully we could get some W's, uh, pick it up from what we did a couple of weeks ago. Last week, not quite as good. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.